Let's go let the animals out. letting the baby chicks out now during the day but they're still not super motivated to come out in the morning they like to stay in they'll come out if it starts to warm up let's go check on the quail These are the youngest ones that I have. I'm actually going to be building them a new pen starting today. Um, it's going to be our grow out pen for all of the quail that we're going to be raising. Looks like everybody else is doing fine. I love having the automatic water for the quail. It makes doing their daily chores so fast. A five gallon bucket of water lasts them almost a month. These guys are always anxious to come out. guineas are already noisy. They've actually become friends with the ducks. They share a feed bowl in the morning now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. My project for today is going to be building a grow out pen for our quail. Uh, I've started with just a couple quail uh, last summer. I've been breeding over the winter and I'm up to about, uh, I don't know, 25 or so breeders that I'm going to be keeping now. And so today uh, we're going to get started building a grow out pen. So as I start hatching more and more, I have a place to grow them out. Now the nice thing about quail is they only take about six to eight weeks to get to uh, butcher age. Uh, a couple weeks ago I showed you that we had our first batch that we hatched here that started laying eggs at just six weeks old, which is just amazing. So we're going to be doing a lot of hatching and, and breeding and things over the next year and this pen or this cage that we're building today is going to be great for that. So um, this cage is going to be housed indoors in one of our barns. So um, 
I'm not going to build it to be weather uh, resistant. Uh, it's going to be completely indoors. So the length of the cage is going to be eight feet long. It's going to be two feet deep. And the actual cage portion is only going to be a foot tall. Now the overall uh, structure will be five feet tall, but the cage part itself is only going to be a foot tall. Uh, with quail, you really want a short cage. Um, that's because if they get startled, they jump straight up in the air. And if you have a tall cage, say a two foot tall cage, uh, they can actually jump straight up, hit the top, and break their neck and die, or injure themselves or whatever. So you really want a short cage. Uh, quail are pretty short birds. They stay on the ground for the most part. And so uh, a one foot tall cage is perfect for them. So that's what we're going to make today. Now today I'm working in the greenhouse. Uh, it's pretty chilly outside today. The high today is only about 40, but here in the greenhouse, it's about 75 degrees. Perfect day. Uh, this is, if, if you, even if you don't like to grow plants, you should invest in a greenhouse just because it makes the best winter workshop uh, you could ever ask for. I do so much out here. So uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, I went to the lumber yard and I picked up a bunch of two by fours and I've ripped those in half into two by twos. Uh, so we're going to be making this uh, today out of two by twos. Let's get started. Alright, we have that first side done. Gives you an idea now of what size the cage will end up being. Uh, we just need to make another one of these and then attach the two sides together. Uh, now on this I'm going to be using half inch by half inch uh, welded wire. We have a big problem here in the Ozarks with uh, snakes. So I need to make sure that this uh, will be snake proof in the summer. So I'm using a half inch by half inch wire on the entire thing. I have that ordered on Amazon. I'm hoping the UPS guy is going to be here sometime while I'm building this today because uh, uh, otherwise I can't finish it today. But we're hoping to get it all done so I'm going to get back to work. All right, got both half, both sides built. Uh, we're going to start to connecting them together now. Uh, now, like most things that I do around here, I don't really have a plan or anything written up of how I'm gonna do it. I'm just trying to figure it out as I go along. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at that over time, and so I'm pretty confident this is gonna turn out uh, good and solid, and we'll get this into the uh, barn and hopefully even get the quail moved in yet today. All right, so I've attached some uh, braces down at the bottom, ran some boards all the way across. Now, the wire will staple straight to this board, uh, but you see here on the ends, I'm gonna have to put a board across here and at the top, because the wire is gonna staple to the very top as well. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next. And then I think we'll staple the wire onto the uh, floor and then we'll build the doors. Well, great news. The UPS guy just showed up with my roll of wire. And so I'm gonna get this cut. I just got the uh, frame 
uh, done except for the doors. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, floor piece of the wire on now. I'm going to cut this to 8 feet and then I'm going to use my uh, staple gun to attach it to the floor. Now my hope is that I won't need any support pieces uh, going across, um, but it, I won't know that really until I get um, all of this wire on and just see how much give there is in it. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to because it'll make it easier for the droppings to fall through, uh, but at the end of the day we need it to be you know, safe and sturdy for the quail as well. So. Uh, we'll see what it looks like after we get the wire attached. Alright, so I have the floor wire all on. Uh, I did end up putting some uh, cross pieces, three of them across, uh, to give it some more stability. Uh, but I did decide not to staple the wire to those cross pieces. Uh, they're just there to add some stability. I figured if I don't staple it, um, these are going to get messed up pretty fast. Uh, you know, every few months I might have to change those out. Uh, and it's kind of a pain to pull staples back out, so I'm just going to leave it. It adds the stability I need, and that way I can easily take these off and replace them if I need to once they start to get, you know, more disgusting. So the next thing is going to be uh, building the doors. Uh, but first, I want to talk to you guys about why I chose to make this the size that I did. Alright, are you guys ready for some nerdy quail math? I know you guys like my nerdy chicken math, so let's do some nerdy quail math. So this cage again is 8 foot by 2 foot which is 16 square feet. Um, now for quail they recommend for uh, your breeders you should have uh, 1 square foot per bird. But for a grow out pen you can put more birds per square foot. So for this size they recommend uh, 3 to 4 birds per square foot. So this should hold anywhere between 48 and 64 uh, quail. Um, and we're going to be right kind of in the middle of that. Let me tell you how we got to that. Okay, now our goal is to have 18 hens that will be laying eggs for us. Out of those uh, 18 hens, we're hoping to get 12 eggs per day, uh, which will give us 84 eggs that we can put in the incubator uh, because you can save eggs for a week before they need to be incubated. We're hoping out of those uh, 84 eggs that we put into the incubator to have about a 70% hatch rate on those eggs and that seems to be about normal from the hatches that we've done so far uh, so that would give us a total of 58 eggs that would hatch now assuming that we'll lose about five percent of those uh, for just uh, random reasons uh, let's say we end up with 55 uh, quail chicks that we can raise uh, in the breed in this uh, pen so again uh, this should hold 48 to 64 so our 55 is perfect now for our family, when we eat quail, we make six quail per meal. Uh, for the four of us, that seems to be about perfect along with side items. Uh, so that means out of 55 quail that we raise, uh, we're going to get nine meals worth of quail. Now because quail take about eight weeks to raise, we can do this six times per year, uh, which would give us 54 meals of quail. Uh, which is just over one meal of quail per week, which is about what we think we would like to consume. So uh, that's how we came up with this number. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy uh, math. Uh, I hope that it all works out the way that, uh, that we're hoping. Uh, but if not, we'll build more uh, pens and we'll be able to raise more. But this, I think, is going to be a perfect size for us. All right, time to get back to work on the cage. The next thing I'm going to do is build uh, doors. I'm going to build two doors on this cage. Uh, it's so long uh, that I really feel like I need two doors in order to uh, be able to get in and out and catch all the quail that I'm going to need. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to build two doors right here on the front.
Well, I've got both the doors on and I think that's about as far as I'm going to get today. Uh, the sun is starting to go down and there's one thing about uh, this type of greenhouse. It might get nice and warm during the day. If I get ready to see my breath now, when that sun goes down, it cools down fast and it's getting cold. I need to go in the house and get a fire started. Uh, this is going to be great for the quail. All I have left to do is put the rest of the wire on and then we can move it into the barn. So watch for that on some upcoming videos. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this project today. Uh, I hope that you will uh, maybe give this uh, this uh, type of cage a try. Uh, it seems to be something that's gonna work out really well. Hey, if you're enjoying uh, our channel and you're not a subscriber yet, now is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button before you leave. Don't just forget to share this on all of your social media and don't forget to follow us on Instagram as well. Until next time, you guys, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.